Good evening, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight, I'm talking about mast cell activation syndrome and headaches. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this series on mast cell is because a lot of you have taken great measures in the last decade or so uh, with your health. You may have changed your diet. You may be taking probiotics. You're taking other supplements, trying to get healthy. Some of you are really healthy and accomplishing your goals. Others are not where you want to be. And so I'm uh, in this journey with you on this relentless pursuit to try and figure out what is causing chronic illnesses. And that's why we're delving deeper into mast cell activation syndrome. Uh, I did a broadcast last week saying that if you want the written article to email uh, me at info at gatesbrainhealth.com. Uh, I wrote an article for tonight's broadcast as well. So I encourage all of you to join our mailing list. Uh, I think that will be helpful for you and me so that we can have a, a more detailed discourse on these topics. <clears throat> but with that being said, with mast cell activation syndrome, I consider mast cell the new leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome is a horrible word. I've never liked it. It's too demonstrative. It, it's uh, almost hyperbolic in that you tell any other doctor that and they're going to roll their eyes because it just sounds kind of, uh, I don't know, it just sounds maybe a little too much. So with that being said, um, leaky gut syndrome is real and we know that phenomena in the gastrointestinal tract, changes in gut bacteria, uh, immune reactions to foods, intestinal hyperpermeability seems to play a role in part or in large part, small part or large part, with most autoimmune diseases and metabolic diseases. But as I said in the intro, many of you are still suffering with different conditions. You're, you may be improved, but you're not as improved as you want to be, which then leads us to question of what are we missing? Because the human body is meant to work, and if it's not working, we need to figure out why it is is not in that fashion. So um, I read the book, Why uh, Never Bet Against the Occam. That's the title, not Why Z Prison. <laughs> Don't get ulcers. Um, I read the book, Never Bet Against the Occam, recently. It's written by Dr. Lawrence Afrin. He is the world's foremost researcher on mast cell activation syndrome. He's not the only one. He's not even the first one really to probably put a, a stake on it. And I, I don't sense that he's egotistical in that fashion at all, but he is a hematologist. He brings a great deal of credibility to the table for those who have chronic mysterious illnesses. And he basically found that a lot of people who have chronic pain or dizziness or headaches or gastrointestinal problems have findings similar to this type of bone cancer called mastocytosis and it basically is a, a neoplasm of the the mast cells and he basically showed that a lot of these people have these similar overlapping features but um, they didn't have mastocytosis so they have mast cell act activation syndrome and we now know by this researcher i think he's from germany dr Mulderings, that one in five people probably have mast cell activation syndrome Mast cells are a type of immune cell that are involved in allergic responses. That's what doctors learn. We learned that mast cells release histamine. And if you have allergies, if you have asthma, if you have urticaria, which is a type of kind of rash you would think of, then you may want to think that this person has a mast cell issue. Um, we now know that mast cells are far more complicated than just releasing histamines, and they're not just associated with mastocytosis. And they're associated with um, let's say the virus that's affecting the entire world right now uh, in terms of what's been going on the last couple of years. And they interplay significantly with that virus. Mast cells, um, let me bring this up. Mast cells da, 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 seem to be involved with, um, let's see, bacterial and fungal infections involved with inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, um, heart attacks are even showing some associations, rheumatoid arthritis, celiac disease, as I mentioned, multiple sclerosis, 
and I'm going to show you the reference for this link, uh, Verici and Marone, mast cells fasting, but still elusive after 140 years um, from their discovery. So we know a lot more about mast cells, but we just don't know everything. And so, yeah, and it is really interesting. Thank you for everyone who is, who's commenting. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating new frontier for those with chronic illness. So um, I'm kind of going on and on, but hopefully this preamble <laughs> will set the stage for future broadcasts because I'm really going to try and pivot out to all of these different conditions within the mast cell domain. Okay, so I'm going to hide that. I'm gonna show this in stream. Show this one. Okay. So this study was written in 2018, an observational study of headaches in children and adolescents with functional abdominal pain, relationship to mucosal inflammation and gastrointestinal and somatic symptoms. This is a really cool study. Basically, in summary, uh, this group are comprised of gastroenterologists. It's an observational study. So they went back and they reviewed 235 charts of kids that they were seeing in their practice for abdominal pain. And one of the most common types of abdominal pain is something called functional dyspepsia. And these are individuals who have some stomach discomfort, tends to be epigastric, meaning up higher. And it's not necessarily associated with them feeling full or not having an appetite or changing with bowel movements. Um, they also looked at irritable bowel syndrome patients in the study. And in reviewing the charts, they looked for associations to headaches because it's something like 50% of kids suffer with headaches, about eight to 9% suffer with migraines. And I think it's about 20% suffer with functional gastrointestinal disorders like functional dyspepsia or irritable bowel syndrome. So, excuse me. So they looked at these, these charts, they looked at their symptoms, they then started correlating, okay, um, you know, this person has nausea as well, this person has fatigue, and they also looked at their endoscopies where they took a scope down into their stomach, into their small intestines, and they quantified mast cells, they quantified eosinophils, and they looked for relationships. Now, one of the key findings they saw, and I'm actually gonna do it this way so this isn't blocking it, was that there was a statistically significant correlation between mast cell density in the first part of the small intestines and headaches in these functional dyspepsia patients, i.e. there's this, there's way too many mast cells in their small intestine for those who had headaches and stomach pain. Might be significant because again, as I mentioned, mast cells are not just associated with histamine responses. And we do know when it comes to headaches that people oftentimes say, well, have you eliminated chocolate? Have you eliminated wine? Have you eliminated cheeses? Have you eliminated sausage? So uh, we all kind of know to say, you know, is there maybe a dietary relationship to your headaches? Well, here they're showing definitively that in these kids who are suffering with stomach pain and headaches, that they had a lot more of mast cells in their duodenum. Okay, so that's interesting. And then they started looking at the other symptoms and they found, I'll do it this way, uh, to a high statistical uh, level that these individuals with headaches and lots of mast cells in their small intestine, that they had fatigue, they had dizziness more often, they had muscle pain, they had joint pain, and they had chest pain. So they didn't see necessarily a significant relationship that they could kneel down with nausea, pain with eating, diarrhea, constipation, but they did see that these individuals suffering with headaches and stomach pain now, a lot of them were fatigued, they were dizzy, they had muscle pain, joint pain, and chest pain. So if you look at those symptoms, now these are pediatric patients. If you look at just these symptoms, fatigue, dizziness, muscle pain, joint pain, chest pain, sounds a lot like fibromyalgia to me, may sound a lot like chronic fatigue syndrome. So it's quite, quite interesting. And Dr. Afrin will comment in his book that he sees a lot of individuals 
who have mast cell activation syndrome who have a history of passing out, uh, getting close to passing out. So um, pretty, pretty cool stuff. And this is a new frontier. And as I mentioned last week, I'm, I'm envisioning mast cell activation syndrome as a parallel pathway to the gut dysfunction I've been talking about for a long period of time. And most of you are really familiar with, given that now most people are aware of gluten-free or autoimmune paleo or you know, against the grain cookbooks. We're all kind of aware, but what else could we be doing? And maybe how is our diet? interplaying with these mast cells? How are the supplements we're taking interplaying with these mast cells? Are there other medications and or supplements that we can be working on collaboratively, maybe with a hematologist or other practitioners for mast cell function, potentially? And even as it relates to headaches, there's some literature that some headache patients will respond to antihistamine therapies, but we it hasn't been investigated that well yet. And so just think of mast cell activation syndrome. It's, this is like 2002 with leaky gut syndrome. It's just the beginning. And it's a very, very exciting frontier. And if you don't feel like you're where you want to be in terms of your health, I would recommend reading Dr. Afrin's book, Never Bet Against Occam. Um, I'll let you read the book to kind of understand what that title means. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. So this is a really, really cool study. Uh, for those of you who want to read it. Uh, oh, shoot. I'll show that in the stream. I'll get it one of these days. So that's the title of the study, an observational study of headaches in children and adolescents with functional abdominal pain. So give me your thoughts. Let me know what you think of mast cell activation syndrome. Where are your questions? And, um, and then we'll kind of go from there. So uh, I want to talk about what you all want to hear about and also what I'm thinking about. So we'll continue this discussion. Tell me what you think. And thank you all for the really uh, nice comments. And <laughs> yes, some of the supplements we use seem to help with mast cell issues. And can mast cell activation cause fat cells to become inflamed? Really interesting question. So something that Dr. Afrin comments on is that as he would uh, address mast cell activation syndrome in his patient population, oftentimes they would lose weight. So he'd be using antihistamines or he'd sometimes be using these different chemotherapy drugs that they would use for mastocytosis, and all of a sudden these individuals would start losing weight. So there seems to be some association to adipose tissue or even, yeah. So probably we could go at a histology, go at it from a histology perspective, look at every tissue in the body and say, okay, how are mast cells in our plane here? Uh, because probably that question has not been well thought out uh, until recently. So. Thank you all. Have a good night and uh, hopefully I'll be back soon with another broadcast. And also, let's put this in here. Again, email info at gatesbrainhealth.com to get on our uh, newsletter list. I'm really trying to get these out more and more to all of you. So um, please, please let us know. Okay. Talk to you later.